coming out on Saturday and Beyond the Vibe, I'm joined by Spike of the Choir Boys. It's we, we actually played the last show with the Sex Pistols in Spain. We played the last show that they ever done together in Spain, right? And um, it was in the Basque country in Spain. Johnny Rotten went on stage. He went, eh, viva España, right? And the, you know, the, in the Basque country, they hate the Spanish. And somebody threw a phone and it hit him right in the head. And then after the show, it was my son's birthday. I said to the tour manager, hey, do us a favor. I says, get them. I know they don't usually sign autographs or whatever. I says, would you get them to sign this uh, for my son for his birthday? And then I went in and I seen a Johnny Rotten. And I says, hey, man, I says, sign this for me, son, will you? And he went, all right. And he drew a big pair of tits on it. And he went to Jonathan from Johnny Rotten. And I says, oh, by the way, can I get my phone back, please? I wasn't on the ball, basically, to deal with a lot of stuff happened, and I, I wasn't, uh, you know. I mean, I, you know, I've known Griff since he was a kid, man, and uh, and Paul and Keith and everything. Yeah, you know, I spent so many years with them, and I love them to death. But it's just like. Mm. If they want to, they've moved on. I'm moving on now. Name me another one. <laughs> name me another. <laughs> <laughs> name, me, name me another new band. I mean, I it doesn't. They don't have the to pulse. be like. They don't. <laughs> yeah. So I'm here with Spike of the Choir Boys. Thank you very much for joining me, Spike. Hey, hey, Ryan. How you doing? Your voice has <laughs> just changed. <laughs> I uh, yes, is that, is that <laughs> I, your TV I voice. That. Yeah, <laughs> that's my it's my radio voice. Spike. Hey, Spike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well done. Um, so, so uh, I think that I always like to do this show is I, I like to go back to the the very beginning uh, yeah. of a musician's journey. So, what first got you into wanting to become a singer? Well, I, I wasn't a singer when mm-hmm. I, when I was. Uh, in the seventies, when I was at school, in them days in primary school, they used to bring guitars in, and and they'd have the whole class trying to learn the guitar. And um, for some reason, I picked up. I could pick it up. I picked it up straight away. And then they, they would let you take the guitar home. And I played my dad this song that I got taught at school that day, and he was so impressed that he uh, he got me private lessons. For some reason, bizarrely, I don't know why. Maybe he wanted me on new faces or something. <laughs> but uh, and then I was like, so I went. I was a big, huge Ralph McTell fan. You know, Streets of London, Been Out, and all that. So I, I loved all that type of music, and uh, so I started basically doing that. And then so I was a guitarist first, and then that led on to to doing classical guitar, and uh, and stuff. So that was my thing, first of all. I never thought I'd end up being a singer. And um, actually, even when we first start the first rehearsals that we done, when I the first songs that I wrote with Guy Bailey mm. when we were living in London, um, we used to re- we rehearsed in Brixton, and uh, I was going to be the rhythm guitarist, and we couldn't find we hadn't even thought about a singer. <clears throat> but I, I'd obviously sang the songs when we were doing them, but I'd never sang through a mic in my entire life. And then, uh, and one day we were rehearsing. It was me, Chris Johnston, um, Guy Bailey, and Bill was on the drums. And I remember all the strings broke on my guitar. And Guy Bailey went, go on, you've been singing these when we've been writing them. Why don't you give it a, a blast through the mic? And then all of a sudden, from sitting there playing quietly, singing the songs, it was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> and I'd never sang before, so it just came out. So in my mm-hmm. head, I always thought I was Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't come out like him. But that's how I started. Yeah. And mm. then, so within the that whole period, then I, I guy went, look, let's, We'll keep it as a um, you just sing. I'll play the he, he, that he just played the guitar. Chris Johnson was at the bass, and 
and Bill was on the drums, Bill Coyne. That's how we first started. Mm. In a, um, in a, it was like a, a youth centre in Brixton. That's where we first started. It was like two pound for like four hours, you know, and uh, and then that led to us doing, um, you know, everything that started off from there. Really, mm. so it's mm. all. Uh, so that's how. Not in Newcastle. I didn't start in Newcastle. It started in uh, in London. Mm. I, th- I think when I was about when I was, I moved to London when I was sixteen. And we started the band when I was 17. Mm. So uh, th- that was when it was the Choir Boys with the C. That was the initial idea. And then when we went, when we, we used to work on a building site opposite Buckingham Palace, St. James' Army Barracks. And uh, and we honestly dressed the same as what we basically do now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I've, I've said this story many a time, but it's the, tr- the truth is how we got the choir boy's name was. Uh, they said, hey, this Irish guy says, I hear you guys are in a band. And I says, yeah, and he's, he's what's the name of the band? And I said, the choir boys. Uh, and uh, this Irish guy goes, well, that fucker in the band, because yeah, his makeup was smudged from the night before. Well, that fucker in the band, it should be called the fucking choir boys. <laughs> so we're, da-da, that's the name. You know, <laughs> so that's how that's how it all started, really. Oh, uh, which um, I've told a million times. So, but uh, um, so that yeah, there was it was me, Chris Johnson, Guy Bailey. That was the mm-hmm. first, you know, and then Nigel came about six months later. Mm-hmm. I, I think I don't think we ever. Chris Johnson was the bass player, and then um, we didn't. We didn't realize, well, I didn't realize he could play the piano. We, he can't anyway, he, just, he plays with one hand. And then, <laughs> and then I met Nigel in, in, I think it was Dingwalls. And that's how uh, he, be, so Chris went from the, the bass to the piano and then Nigel joined. So that's how it all started, really. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think, I think growing up, everybody has that kind of, that first band that they always really connect with. Did you have like a a band yes. that's like your band? Oh, the Rolling Stones. Mm. I, I, you know, I've, I've got, I get two older sisters, and uh, uh, my Julie was massively into the Stones, and Angie was into David Bowie. So it was like around that time, you know. And uh, so I had I had two good teachers musically, and when I, when I had this, that was my ultimate thing. You know, you know, and then that led me onto the blues and different things like that. Once I, <clears throat> once I uh, heard them, so it was, it was just that was the major point of my life was the the, the Rolling Stones. You know, and uh, and then I loved ACDC. I loved all all the bands around that. Time. I mean, you know, see, so you, you know, around even when the Sex Pistols came out and stuff like that. So, you know, be, probably before that. Deep Pur- I mean, everything my sisters used to listen to, I, I would listen to, like Deep Purple, Stones, ACDC, you know, Janis Joplin, The Who, everything like that. So I had some good teachers, you know. Mm-hmm. But I loved my folk music. I loved my ragtime guitar, and I loved all that, like Stefan Grossman, Ralph McTell. I loved all that, you know, um, finger-picking and stuff like that. So that was my first thing, and then went off to do classical, and then... Then just played three chords and with the clairvoyance, <laughs> four chords. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, obviously the the debut album uh, came out in nineteen ninety. A bit of what yeah. you fancy. Um, of course, you know you signed with with EMI and Sharon Osbourne was the uh, yeah. the manager for a while. And um, what was that time like for you personally? I mean. It, it kind of that album changed everything, really, didn't it? You know, it's the one that's. Well, yeah, but you. I think what people forget is, you know, I was when so seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It took four. But we, I was talking about this earlier, and it was, it, I feel sorry for young bands now because we actually did go through that whole thing where, you know, you're in the transit van, you're sleeping on the amps, you're playing every shit all in the world, or every shit all in England. 
and um and you learn what you're doing you, you know what i mean and, and just that whole it, people people i think people forget that when when the choir boys actually did get signed we had been playing for a very very long time you know so that led into us being on tour non-stop for years when we, so when we got the record deal and we were playing all you know with Eris, all them bands and Eris Smith, Guns N' Roses everything like that I mean the Stones David Bowie all that we'd been on tour for a long long time mm. you know so it was like there was no break for us really up until um, this after the second album that was the first time we we had a break <laughs> yeah, after bit and sweet and twisted, really. Mm. Yeah, but that—that's you know, when I see, it's such a shame that the young bands can't learn their trade now. I think you know, if they can get this, you know, we were probably we were from that generation where it was just about dying off, all that, all that going on, you know, but um. Yeah, so I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to end up like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you feel kind of all of that goes into that debut? I mean, a lot a lot of people find that, you know, debut album's almost like a best of of like the previous like four or five years of, of their work. Well, no, it's, uh, what was funny, uh, um, when I got back with Guy Bailey again, um, the beginning of, of our last year, we were going through songs that we hadn't recorded. We, I was like, we were sitting there, and I was like, going, "Do you remember this?" And he, uh, he'd forgotten it, and I was like, "Going, God!" And then he went, "Do you remember this song?" And I was like, "God, there's so many songs that we didn't that we didn't put out." And I said, "You know, we should record them because otherwise, these songs would have been lost." Mm. And as soon as we, as soon as he started a bit on the of one of the songs. I remembered it straight away. And you do remember them because you've written them. And you, you like go, oh my God. And then I was like, and he's like, how the fuck do you remember that? And I was like, God, this is so weird, isn't it? And that's when we, that was when we, you know, the initial thing of when we got back together. And I says, mm -hmm. come on, and let's write a new song. You know, and that's how it all started up again, really. So, uh, so you have, yeah, like, uh, on the first album, there wasn't a lot of a lot of the songs weren't the true punters that used to come to see the choir boys way back when, when we played with like Temple Tudor or we played with a lot of punk bands and different things like that. Will know these other songs that not many people will. Do you mm. know what I mean? So, uh, but I said to the guy, we should record them just to so we've got them. You know. Because there wasn't anybody with video camera telephones and all that to record all this stuff back in them days. So uh, it's lucky that we can, you know, we, we can remember 30 years ago, but we can't remember last week. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that says? <laughs> um, so, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. But the, the, a lot of the songs off the second album should have been on the first album as well so mm. it's you, you know you can't win i don't know we just picked <laughs> what we were doing at the time and then chose what songs were going to be there for the first album you know mm. it's like hey so please that was one of the first songs that i ever wrote i wrote that when i was 13 and um that didn't go on the album until the second album so it just shows you doesn't it you know Mm. How do you choose? Like, if you've got a repertoire of of songs at that point, mm. how, how do you like? It's like picking your favorite child, isn't it? Like, how do you? Yeah. Well, well, when we when we first started, I mean, you got like seven o'clock, right? Mm. Seven o'clock never used to have a chorus. You know, it's seven o'clock. That was never in. That was only written. The chorus was only written um, in Los Angeles when we were um, when we were rehearsing f to record the album. And Jim Cregan said to me, he says, do you know what? He says, that song's brilliant. He says, but do you know what? If he, if he just could have 
it seems to me like it should go to a chorus. Mm-hmm. And I went, what do you mean, like this? It's seven o'clock, time for a party. And he went, brilliant, put that down now. <laughs> and that's how it came about. So that it's funny, isn't it? That's, I'm, that's why Jim Cregan is a brilliant producer. Mm. And he's great with songs. You know, he he was telling what to, to add in, what because we're like going, oh, we shouldn't have a chorus. We should keep a... Being Guy Bailey always wanted to keep the choir boys very simple and not, you know, not go, you know, four f- chords at the most, four or five chords, and then on the ballads, maybe a few more. But we never... But I, I totally understood what Jim was talking about that day when I'd done that. And it... It, I don't know where it comes from, but you just, I just, that, that's what happened that, that one day when Jim went, do a chorus. After the, you know, after the bridge and going to that is, is the chorus. And Guy always had the, he loved about the hoople and everything like that. And mm. the, the back end, what was it? The ba 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 ba, and all that type of stuff. We all loved all that type of thing, you know? And the harp at the beginning. I mean, I, I, I really couldn't play the harp at all then. Um, that's the can't now, but that's why it's so simple. The dun, 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 dun. and Guy Bailey plays the same thing on every song. <laughs> Jim Creek has said to him, the, I was speaking to Jim the other day, and he went, He says, he says, I'll never forget. He says, I was in the studio when we were in the studio with Guy, and he went, He says, Guy, you do realize that you're playing that same riff on about five songs on the album, and he went, Yes, Jim but it's fucking brilliant, isn't it? And he went, I can't argue with that. <laughs> I'm good for Chip Berry. <laughs> I mean, it makes for a, a, an easy gig night if you just strut away, same old. <laughs> well, it, it, see, the difference is there's only so many causes. I mean, when I've been writing recently with Guy, we haven't went off that path of, of just using three or four chords. There's one song, I mean, we... When I when uh, we always used to sit there and and, and go, wouldn't it be great? Let's do a one with just two chords. You know what I mean? Find that two chord song. I remember speaking to uh, um, the uh, the Georgia Satellites when we played with them and they'd done Battleship Chains, and it, that's only a two chord song. And it was like, oh my god! And but the thing is, they didn't write it; it was some other guy. So uh, Dan Baird. I was like, Dan, that's such a great song for two chords. You went, oh shit! I didn't write. It. Didn't write, it, man. Somebody else. So there's always, if you're a young songwriter out there, try and write everything with just two major chords, and then you're off. And never try not to go to the minor, if you can help it. Don't tell Tyler that though. <laughs> <laughs> When I wrote stuff with Tyler, when we done the uh, Hot Knives album, I was like going, Tyler, you can't go to a minor. <laughs> and he was getting really, I've got to go to the minor. I've got to go. He uses the minor all the time. But uh, it's funny how, you, you know, he can, uh, It's such a, it was such a great thing to write with him again because we were back to what we were like when we were kids, basically. And it very quick. Really nice, you know. It's like writing. We know each other so well, so it's like, and we work off each other so well that um, it was just a great feeling to be able to go back and and I I was just shocked at how quick we wrote the stuff again and how we, you know, we we got this new album together so quickly. Really, mm. so it's it's been a joy, man. It's been brilliant. Um, I mean, speaking of that, obviously, last year you you kind of went your separate ways with the the prior uh, version yeah. of the Choir Boys, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and obviously you've you've now kind of reformed this original uh, version of the Choir Boys. Yeah. How did that come about? I mean, it's like well, it when, must have been you know, from like a low place to this kind of new high in such a short space of time. Well, it, it it all worked out really for the best because mm. you know to get back with Guy and to to write these new songs and bring it back to how the Choir Boys should sound, you know. And uh, you you got to remember that that me, Guy, Chris, and Nigel, 
and Rudy and everybody. We were always very good. For, we've, we've known each other, you know, me, especially me, Guy, Nigel and Chris Johnson. You know, they were all there from when we were 17, 18. When I was, but Nigel's just a little bit older than me, but we were all together around that time. And, and what we went through from the early days up until we got the deal and then, you know, touring all over the world, and, you know, that th there's not many people that can. So we've always been like, you know, s brothers, basically. We've always been together. Even when I was doing the, the new, you know, the last few albums with the, uh, with them, I'd, I'd be like, you know, they knew it was, uh, my heart really, it wasn't right. Mm. It, it wasn't sounding like the choir boys in my head to what it should have been anyway. And then, you know, I wasn't, I don't know, you know, it's just one of them things where, I think I've said this before, but, but it was just like, I didn't want to go down the route that they were going basically as well. Uh, everything that was being done, and I had it was just you know, but they fired me. What can I say from my own band? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I own the trademark too, and everything right. else. I mean, you know, I started when I was 17, for God's sake, mm. it's ridiculous. You know, let them play all this, let them play all the songs that they wrote, fair enough, but don't play my songs. Mm. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. But, you know, I understand what they're trying to do and uh, good luck to them, you know. But uh, I'm just moving forward, you know. Oh, uh, I, I get, I mean, is is your vision of the choir boys kind of almost what the, the early works were? So that well, kind of if, first you know what, man, you know, we didn't have 10 albums on that, on that thing. And the majority of the set, every time we played was was you know the majority of the set was songs off the first the six or seven songs off the first album if not mm. more and then a few off the second album and then you'd be lucky to put in new songs that we were doing and we'd, we'd do that on each album but the majority of the set was always the early stuff you know there wasn't uh and I, I i've heard what they've said that i wouldn't uh do them which is absolutely ridiculous you know so um I don't understand the logic be behind what they were saying, but it's up to them, you know. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what? This is the first time I've thought about it for ages, speaking to you. That doesn't even enter my head anymore. It's like I've got a new beginning now. So uh, with everything else, and plus I've just been, tonight I've been mixing the new, I played, uh, you know, Spike's Free House that I've done, the 100% Pierre Frankie Miller album that I've done. I'd done Spike's Free House and 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 at Sweden Rock. And I've just been listening to the mixes of that. We'll be doing the mixes of that tonight. And that sounded amazing with uh, Luke Morley from Thunder and Simon Kirk from Free mm. and Moxdown. And it just sounds so great live. We're doing half Free and half Frankie Miller. And it was in front of like 30,000 people. It was a great day. So that's what I've been listening. That's what I've been doing today, sorry, to get that out in the next few months as mm. well. As well as doing the new Choir Boys album. Which I, I was going to say, the. I mean, I hear that there's a new one, new album coming around. The yeah, all the songs are done. Everything's everything's going to plan, so it's all great. Mm. Yeah. We're mm. just deciding whether to go to Los Angeles instead of doing it in England. That's the, the other thing. We've got the studio booked in England, but we're like, there's been a few things and a few people want to go out because Nigel lives in L.A., Really lives in uh, in Ottawa, and it might be a lot easier for us to go out there than for everybody to come here. That that's the only thing that we're discussing at the minute. Mm. But that can change. It, it'll not take us long to do this. the The songs are written, so it's it's just like getting the groove and and getting everything together. So, and when when we were doing the the short Christmas, we we were playing some of the new songs and they'll they come together so quickly. It's hard not to. When we've played together for such a long time, you know, um, it's hard not to. It's like as though we've been playing them songs for years. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but on that night, we wanted to, I wanted to play songs off the first two albums. 
and it, it, you know we played for nearly two and a half hours that night so it was like <laughs> you know and it was so we didn't we were gonna uh, we, we had other songs to put in and i was like i think we were running out of time or something i don't know but there'll be a few it's all coming together really good and i can't wait for everybody to hear it because it is what everybody should expect from a choir boys album it's pure rock and roll you know it's pure rock and roll how it should be and there's no bands out there doing what we do mm. there really isn't you know obviously except the stones and you know i, I would like this you can't let this music go you know especially writing new songs in that vein of how we do it it's just been it's been like a total eye opener for me it honestly mm. has I mean, and, you uh, seem you seem re-energized. I mean, obviously, when you went back out on stage with that original line out, did it yeah. feel like, you know, like this? Yeah, is what I mean, it should you be know getting, what? You know? It was as soon as as soon as uh, we got in a room together. It was just like, oh my! Especially when Chris Johnson started playing the piano with his one mm. hand. <laughs> <laughs> we can't play with two now. <laughs> <Big rest. laughs> He's been practicing. <laughs> But uh, it was just like, oh, my God. You know when he gets shivers? It was like that. It was one of them things. And everybody mm. in the room was like, oh, my God, this is fucking brilliant. So we knew mm. we wanted something again. And everybody was just so happy. And we all know each other so well. So it was just like such a great feeling again, you know, of how everybody having fun. Mm. No rows and, or, you know, people saying this, people saying, everybody's, you know, that's the way it should be. It's, you know, rock and roll is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be a job. You know what I mean? No, I, I agree. I mean, I have heard that the the bar is apparently making a return. The bar it, was it, on stage that night. Yeah. <laughs> no, we had and 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 actually, um, yeah, we had the the full bar. Did, did you not? We you were, obviously weren't there. Were you? It's oh, I been filmed. Be there, no. it's, the whole show's been filmed. So it's it's uh, that'll be coming out later in the year. There's a documentary coming out on mm. Netflix and stuff. So there's going to be the the whole thing with the um with cut with cuts into the show and how it was all put together and everything like that. So that's going to be uh, it's like a little documentary thing coming mm. out. And you'll see the bar and I get all <laughs> the people up on stage to have a drink with us and different <laughs> things like that. So uh, and actually, Leela uh, came over from. Um, uh, the barmaid from the uh, Rainbow in Hollywood. She came over to be the barmaid that night. Oh my god! <laughs> so yeah, it's great. Um. <laughs> really good fun. I didn't have a drink from the bar though. No, no, I wasn't drinking that night. <laughs> <laughs> I had a few drinks when I got on, but. Uh, I haven't had any spirits for three years, four years. Just, my just days strictly... of drinking, my drinks, my days of drinking uh, <laughs> Jack Daniels and stuff are over now, I think. So, that's, that, I think that's the way to be. Yeah. So mm. there's a lot of stuff coming out, mate. It's going to be it good. Fe it feels like a busy time. I mean, are you, are you yeah. planning on this album out like this year or? Yeah, it'll like, be yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. I've got Spike's Free House coming out, the live album, next, mm. and then that'll be coming out after that. And then uh, I've, oh, I'm in. The studio, I've, I've, I'm also releasing um, another limited edition. Of, I've, I've done Spike's Late Night Songbook Two, which are basically my mom's favorite songs. Was just me playing the acoustic guitar and singing. So that's coming out in the next, not this week, but next. Mm as well but just a limited edition with a dvd of me live at uh i believe it was buckley tivoli in concert as well so that's going to be a limited edition thing coming up mm. and uh so there's a lot lots going on in between organizing what's what shows we're doing in the summer and, and leading up to christmas with the choir boys so it's all good mm. it's all coming together yeah it has yeah. been. I mean, this is you know you got to remember when that whole thing happened. I didn't really know, you know, on my side it wasn't a plan that I was, you know, it was their idea. I guess so, you know I got sent a letter, so that, right. that's that was the thing. So I was like, what the fuck? 
but um, uh, but I could see it coming. I think you know, mm. and I, it was just getting too much as well. I think you know, I was asking too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think, and, and the whole point is, thing, is the brand of the Choir Boys was going down the hill. I mean, I'm playing acoustic, the same shows that the band plays. There's a full band now, uh, and then this was mm. going on. And I was like, when the Choir Boys are worth more than this, the name is worth more than this, and we lost track of that on the way. You know, we really did, and um, you know that, that I don't. They really, you know, I I wasn't on the ball, basically, to deal with. A lot of stuff happened, and I, I wasn't, uh, you know. I mean, I, you know, I've known Griff since he was a kid, man. And uh, and Paul and Keith and everything. Yeah, you know, I spent so many years with them, and I love them to death. But it's just like, mm. if they want to, they've moved on, and I'm moving on now. So it's, you know, but they can't have the... You know, the whole choir was thing. I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, it's how always can, difficult how can to you, replace. How can, you get, yeah. how can you use a name that I thought of when I was 17 and I'm still touring with it? I mean, come on. I know yeah. what you mean. But, it's. Yeah. I, I think it's always difficult, even regardless of the name, to replace a singer in a band. Because it's like they're the voice of the band, you know. That's the mm. one the audience always associates. Yeah, you know, they put that voice with that band. Yeah. Um, so I think it's such a, a difficult thing. Like a lot of people associate you as the choir, bo- you know what I mean? Like Spike and the Choir I, I, Boys. You know, what? I don't think there's really an issue, and mm. I think I've, I've pro- proven my point anyway. Because uh, you know, it's like <clears throat> to sing them songs properly. You have to sing in a diff- different register. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I sing on a top level. You know, and and we never, I never detuned or anything like that. And um, it's it's you you, you can ask any singer. A lot of my friends are singers. I mean, t- t- to do what I would do on stage is fucking hard. Mm. You know what I mean? It really is. And uh, luckily. You know, I got blessed with a, a a voice that can cope with that. But let's see if it carries on. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, a question I always like to to finish on that ask every guest on the show: um, If you could tour with one band from the past and one band right. from the present, who would they be? Well, do you know what? The, I've played with my favorite band. Haven't I? I've played with the Rolling Stones. That's really that was true. A dream come true. So from the past, I mean, what can I say? That that is wonderful. From now, um, or otherwise, it would have been, you know, all the the soul stuff in the past. But hmm. name me a rock and roll band from today, <laughs> please. Well, a really popular answer that we get uh rival sons is a really popular answer do, do you know what, man? I, i'm i played on bills with them and i i i honestly they sounded like a great rock band to me but i, I couldn't really name you a couple any of the songs or anything but um <laughs> lovely guys I, i'm sure i met them when, when we i think we played um oh, i can't remember the fact we played a few festivals at the one and, and i thought they were wonderful yeah and the american guys Yes, the American, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've got respect for any band that can keep touring and and making, you know, <laughs> getting a following these days. So good luck to them, you know. Um, I would like to tour with in the future a new band. Name me another one. <laughs> name me another. <laughs> <laughs> name me, name me another new band. I mean, it doesn't. They don't the have to be pulse. like. They don't, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, don't, they don't have to be like new news. A like thunder be, class is a new band. Well, they're still going. <laughs> you know, like it can be a band that's still. I mean, technically, yeah. the Rolling Stones are going today. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like, I mean, 
Do you know what? You... Honestly, I mean, I've played with so many. I've played with from David Bowie. Mm. I've even played with Bowie. I've played with Aerosmith. I've played with Guns N' Roses. I've played with um, the Stones. I've played with so many. You know, we've had such a privileged career, really. You know, from Bon Jovi, all them, and you know, all them bands in America that were, were around at that time as well, and. Um, you know, some obscure bands and things. All the punk bands we used to play with when we first started, like Tenpole Tudor and all that. And, um, uh, if there was one you could kind of, that you didn't get to tour with, if there was one that you I could mean, kind of we go back and Sex fetch. Pistols. We, we actually played with the last show with the Sex Pistols in, in Spain. We played the last show that they ever done together in Spain, right? And um, it was in the Basque country in Spain. And uh, Johnny Rotten went on stage and he um, he went, eh, Viva España, right? And the, you know, the, in the Basque country, they hate the Spanish. And somebody threw a phone and it hit him right in the head. And then after the show, it was my son's birthday. And, uh, you know, like the Sex Pistols, you, you know, like when you have a dressing room, it's got Sex Pistols. Sex Pistols dressing room. I says, and I said to the, uh, um, I said to the tour manager, "Hey, do us a favor." I says, "Get them." I know they don't usually sign autographs or whatever. I says, "Would you get them to sign this uh, for my son for his birthday?" And then I went in. I seen uh, Johnny Rotten, and I says, "Hey, man!" I says, "Sign this for me, son, will you?" And he went, "All right." And he drew a big pair of tits on it. And he went to Jonathan from. Johnny Rotten. And I says, oh, by the way, can I get my phone back, please? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> and they were great. Sex Pistols are always a part of everybody's life, I guess, no matter what music you like. It's but, very uh, funny. Yeah. I don't know what band would you tour with. Um, oh. I mean, I mean, number one, I can't play, so it'd be a very disappointing evening for whoever was involved. Right. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I, I'd, I'd always like the idea of like the Doors, okay. know, like Jim Morrison or some somebody like. Because right. I think they'd just be interesting to be around. Yeah. Or or maybe Jimi Hendrix or. Right. You're picking old drug drug addicts and it's, drugs. It's very <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd like Just to be around them. The as whole well. of the 27 Club. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody like that now, is there? No. <laughs> you know? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? It'll be, I'm, I'm just so looking forward to doing these other shows with whoever, you know, who, who's ever around to play with now. Mm. And, you know, and I'm so lucky that I've made a lot of friends in the business and th through other bands and everything like that, you know. The, one of the greatest bands is UFO. Yeah. And they're, still, they're going out this year. Well, and we've say played with them a few times of... before. So I'd love to mm. play with Uncle Phil again. That would be great. <laughs> so uh, Uncle Phil Mogg. And we'll have two Moggs together again. Nigel Mogg and his uncle. So, it was meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm sure that everybody will be seeing one or a few things this year. And uh, I'm doing a few... Hopefully, doing a few Spikes Free House shows on some festivals and stuff as well. Mm. The album coming out, but it's all go, mate. Non-stop. It does seem a very busy time. Um, thank yeah. you very much for speaking with me, Spike. And thank of you course, very for much those. For me. <laughs> thank you for, for those that obviously want to go and check you out. Um, you've got uh, some upcoming acoustic shows coming up. The Rock and Roll and Storyteller. Yeah, I, I just played. I played it the week. I played the other. I, I'm not doing so many of these at the minute because obviously with the choir boy stuff coming up and everything. Mm. But I played in Sheffield the other night, Newcastle, my hometown, which was wonderful. <laughs> and uh, all uh, all the acoustic shows are selling out. It's been absolutely mm. brilliant. I played in, uh, in Bradford the other night. I, I honestly can't remember. I'm off to Ireland. I know that. And, um, I have seen well. as more more dates have been added. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a few, and uh, I've done three shows in Ireland, mm. two, um, one at in at Whelan's in Dublin as well. So not two in Northern Ireland, one in, in Ireland. So uh, 
I think that's the next one. So you'd have to you have to tell me where the, the other ones are. <laughs> well, the, the uh, link then, will uh, be in the description for below yes, for people to up, check please. out this put nice full list of come and, come and see come and see me play acoustic, and I'll uh, play you whatever song you want. <laughs> we were doing that the other night, and I was like, "What song do you want to hear?" And everybody's shouting them out. And I just went and played them. That's what I've been doing, and playing all the songs that you know that we grew up, I grew up loving, and mm. songs by bands that I've played with, and I'm playing some choir boy songs, and it's just a mixture of everything, telling mm. stories and having a laugh, and it's it's been it's such a good time because then I you know it's like having all your family around, man. We have such a great time doing it. It's really good. Mm. So, well, thank you very much, Spike. Thank you, my and, friend. Uh, I will catch you around. I'm sure I'll have to come and check you guys out. Oh, I know who I should play with: Black Veil Brides. <laughs> that's it's an Nigel's interesting sister. choice. That's Nigel's sister's husband. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll play with that. That would be an interesting evening. <laughs> Are they any good? You don't know. You don't. You haven't heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now they're playing this weekend. I've heard. Are they? Oh uh, yeah, that's something. Like that. <laughs> They're American, aren't they? They are American. You, you've nailed that. You've got that down. Yes. <laughs> some good, no, I, I remember. Um, uh, there's some great the the, the good ba- the good bands that I, the young bands that I heard from America are always from like the South, you know. So and, and some great. I mean, you know, I, I, I I'm going back out to America and. There's some great, there's always great bands coming out of there. If you like the Allman Brothers and all that, you know what I mean? It's some great stuff. Mm. And, um, but as we, as I was saying earlier, but when we play in America and we play all, there's a different thing about what we do. It's, it is very, very English, very Great Britain. It's not, it's not like, um, you know, I think anybody knows when they come to see the choir boys. It's 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 a it's a fun evening. It's a party, and it's pure English rock and roll. You know, mm. of what people want to hear. I think so. Uh, with a mixture of everything else put in, <laughs> but uh, so I'm I'm going to keep doing this for as long as I can. As long as I can sing, I'll be out every night. All right, every night, <laughs> every night, every night. But not as much as what I was doing before. It was too ridiculous before. Mm. Okay. Right. Well, thank you very much, Spike. And, Thanks, uh, it's Ryan. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. God and, bless uh, you, my friend. Thank you very much.